Hello, Albert here. Welcome back to another episode of Jet vs. AJ. In this series, we talk about why my business partner, Jet, is so much faster than myself. I break down a specific section of a supercross track and try to give you guys some information as to kind of what he's doing right or wrong, what I'm doing right or wrong, and why it's causing the time gap that it is. If you guys want to send in your riding footage, you can go to themotoacademy.com and click the club where you can download the app and send in all of your riding footage for Jet Lawrence and myself to analyze and hopefully give you a little bit of insight as to what you can improve upon as well. All right, so let's dive in and see what we're working with. This is at St. Louis Supercross. There's a sand section into an elevated left-hand corner where you drop off, go double-double, then a 90 degree left into that on off. And then you have about, I think 11 or 12 whoops here that were fairly big and pretty steep, left into one of the bigger finish line jumps that we've had this year. There was an inside or outside option in the sand. The elevated corner was extremely rutted and the rut would continue all the way off the jump face, which was making it difficult. This on off here was pretty difficult because there was no lip to get you off and the landing of this step on step off was really steep. So it took some strategy on how to clip that so that you wouldn't get kicked. I saw a lot of guys get endoed into the whoops. So we'll just watch how I hit it a few times through. Right there you noticed I stand up through that left hand turn. Uh, I think I just stood up right there as well. Kind of my strategy just to move less on the bike. But I was having a heck of a time trying to get through these whoops and just closing myself off for the corner as well. Now watching Jet, both of us, by the way, experimented with the inside and outside in the sand. Just would depend lap to lap which was better. Um, Jet, just a little more commitment. Oh my gosh, and so much more commitment going into the whoops. And when you, sh when you see these clips side by side, what you guys will notice is his bike is a lot more squatted. Wow, on the throttle so early in the sand. Through the entire whoop section. And I, that's a little bit of bike setup. I know that those guys have a cut shock in the rear to try to get the rear end down a little bit on the Hondas, but that's also a lot of commitment and Jet just stays in the throttle which squats the rear end and keeps the bike planted where even on the times where I come in fast, I'll let off the throttle and all of a sudden the teeter-totter effect will start. Jet does a great job keeping that upper body really stable, looking ahead, committing to the turn, driving in between the obstacles and wasting no time. And he doesn't cut off the throttle going into the whoops. It's one continuous throttle. I can tell that because the bike never unloads. The bike drives up into the whoops and will stay squatted and settled the whole time. Look at him throw up the roost so early in that sand corner. Oh, just making his own line. That looked pretty quick. It was one of those corners where when you went inside, good job getting off that step on, step off. It felt very slow going to the inside, but you were cutting off so much distance that it did actually work. All right, here's side by side. I'm standing up in the inside in the sand. That worked pretty well. Big time lack of commitment for me in the pockets of these rhythm sections where Jet charges and drives across his, the on off. I'm doing a lot more setup. And then look at his entry speed in the whoops compared to mine. And look at what it does to our bikes by the time we get out of them. My bike's dancing, teeter tottering. His is super planted. So here's slow motion, same clip. The stand-up works great in the sand, keep the bike nice and light. I actually come out of the sand a little bit ahead of him. In this left-hander here, I take a lot more time to get set up for the corner. Jet sits earlier than I do, so you could tell he gets on the throttle earlier than me. Still fairly even, but this left-hand turn, I stand up the whole way, probably lose a little bit of time there compared to him. And then this is where the big difference is. I come in decent, my bike's pretty planted there, but he's probably going now towards the end is where I start to lose my speed. He's probably going seven to 10 miles an hour faster than me on those last five or six whoops, which by the time we get to the finish, look at the gap that he's pulled on me just in that one section alone. All right, same clip again, here's the timer on it. Pretty even, pretty even. This is where he starts to pull. So big drive out of that corner, drives across the on off, he sits down to try to get a little extra pop and then he's in fourth gear through the whoops, and so am I in this set. But um, just he just stays on the throttle through, nice and smooth, keeps his head forward. And here's slow motion with the timer. 
just so you guys can get a little bit better look here. Big time delay in my corner there halfway through and it's because there was the rut going out. So, and you guys can relate to this. I was so worried about the rut that I forgot that the jump was there and it would actually end up screwing my jump up where Jet is so confident in the corners and his ability to hit the rut that he wasn't concerned with the jump, the rut, none of it. He's just able to look ahead, let the bike go beyond. See by the end of the whoops, I'm trying to tire tap and just get out of those things. Another delay in the turn for me where Jet's accelerating probably about 10 to 15 feet earlier than I am in the corners. All right, now this is a different clip. Here's us going outside in the sand. Both of us do a pretty good job of stabilizing upper bodies. You can see a scrub to the left off that step up. That's to not only stay low, but it was also we were trying to get the bike aimed to the left so we didn't have to delay too much going into the turn. Notice what Jet does a good job of going into this corner as well as he hits the whoops all the way right. And that's not just to try to find smooth track on the whoops, that's to try to set him up for the corner as well. All right, so let's see. I think he, he beats me by even a lot more in this one. He's already got a couple tire lengths on me. Going scrub to the left, jump up onto the plateau. I think I choose the stand here, which was my go-to the whole night. It worked pretty well. It wasn't fast, but it was consistent. Now right here, Jet goes inside, doesn't use the berm. Really difficult to do, not only to create the proper angle, but just to get the speed to get on off. I cased it on off with my front tire, which for casing it, I did a pretty good job of absorbing that. Man, a Jet's bike just stays on such a level plane where all that is is speed and commitment. Easier said than done. It's terrifying to enter a set of whoops like that with the speed that he does. It is really high risk, but when he does it, he has so much confidence and he keeps his head forward. It doesn't matter. All right, so watch Jet's upper body. Watch his head. This sand section was really difficult, especially with the rollers. All it wanted to do is make the bike wash out. And if you can have that strong core, tighten your abs like somebody's gonna punch you in the stomach, keep those elbows up and keep that head centered, that creates consistency so that you could go through it every lap. Look at his foot high and tight, toe pointed in. Same thing, head not moving, nice and centered. Only real thing I could nitpick there is his outside foot isn't quite on the balls of his feet. He's gotta get that off the rear brake and get it back to the balls of his feet. He knows I always bust on him for that. but he stays so centered that he's able to get away with it a lot of the time. Right there, gets off the rear brake, gets back to the balls of his feet. And this is where it gets tricky. Let's see if he sits. So right here, he's trying to get as much compression and rebound as possible. He keeps the bike level and kind of sucks it up to himself so he can get over that steep landing. Right here, he misses the first big whoop with his front tire, which is exactly what you want to do. This is fourth gear, head forward, knees back, trying to drop the heels. And those whoops were no joke. The more they formed the cups, the harder they were becoming, which was not typical of St. Louis dirt. It was, they, they just weren't forgiving. Typically St. Louis is soft enough where they'll give out a little bit. And uh, you can see the other riders trying to get through the whoops. And watching Jet this weekend in the whoops, in person versus Christian Craig was really interesting as well because in my mind, Christian and Jet are the two fastest and watching them in the whoops at Atlanta, Jet was actually faster than Christian, which is crazy because in my mind, those are the, some of the top whoop guys, period, 250 or 450. So there you have it. Jet completely killing me in those last three turns at St. Louis, and hopefully that explained a little bit as to why. The cool thing is that even though this is super cross and some things, yeah, are specific, their skill sets and their skill sets and techniques that you can utilize on motocross, in the woods, any type of two wheel riding that you're doing, the more knowledge you create around your riding in general and around watching the guys in supercross ride, the more you can apply it to yourself. So when you're out there in real time making mistakes, hitting a corner perfectly, you can make those adjustments on the fly in real time. Again, if you wanna train with me, head over to the motoacademy.com. Click the tour if you wanna check out our 2022 world tour. Gonna to be traveling all over teaching these classes in person. If you wanna train online, click the club, then download the app so you guys can do all of your training with Jet Lawrence and myself inside the app online. Gonna be a busy next few weeks for us. We'll have a lot of videos coming out, so make sure you guys subscribe to the YouTube channel. And uh, yeah, all right, I gotta catch a flight. Toodaloo.